Exodus 1 through 18 is the story of Israel's freedom from slavery. Exodus 19 through 40 is God's instructions on how to live in that freedom. The book moves from its first half of primarily stories to its second half of primarily statutes. Do you guys like that? Anyways. But first, more about Moses and the people. They'd exited Egypt and they'd passed through the Red Sea. Now they're at the base of Mount Sinai, a massive and epic mountain. God came down in a pillar of black smoke. The Bible says the smoke went up like out of a kiln. A trumpet sound reverberated from the smoke and grew louder and louder. Is this a horror film? Moses and Aaron entered the smoke, but the people were forbidden. From the mountain, God gave his top 10 list for obedience, the Ten Commandments. No other gods, no idols, no taking God's name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your parents. Don't commit adultery. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness against a neighbor and don't covet. That means sinfully desire someone else's possessions or people. After this, the story moves from plot to principle. For the next three chapters, the Lord gives Moses a lot of specific guidelines, rules, and laws. Laws about murder, slavery, parents, theft, neighbors, marriage, acceptable sexuality, money lending, witnesses, trials, land resting, feasts, and governance of the land promised to Abraham. The people responded with enthusiasm and acceptance, and they said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. I mean, they didn't follow through, but at least in the moment, they were all for it. Moses and 70 of the elders of Israel went up Mount Sinai to see God, true proximity to I am. They were really close to him. They didn't see God's face, nobody ever has, but they saw under his feet and the Bible says it looked like paved sapphire as clear as the sky itself. Moses and Joshua stayed at the top of the mountain in God's presence, not eating or drinking for 40 days and 40 nights. Sounds like Jesus. God gave six chapters worth of information and commands about his permanent dwelling place with his newly freed people. God would dwell in a tabernacle, and he gave Moses beautiful blueprints for what would be in it. A wooden ark with overlaid gold that would serve as the final resting place for the stone tablets that God's finger was writing these instructions on, as well as other relics and treasures. There would also be a mercy seat of gold with angels on it, a wooden table covered in gold. There's a lot of gold. There's golden lampstands too. God also described to Moses how the tabernacle itself should look with beautiful material, curtains, clasps, frames, bars, a blue, purple, and red veil in the entryway. God was showing how beauty and creativity are important and that they should have a place in worship. God also told Moses how to make and use the altar, the court, the lamps, the priest's entire outfit from head to toe, including an amazing gold plate that would be wrapped around their turban with a blue cord that says, holy to the Lord. God gave Moses detailed instructions also on the offerings, the altar, the incense, a census of the people, artistic people to make it all happen, and more on the observance of the Sabbath. Right there in the middle of these beautiful, detailed, holy instructions, the people of Israel just go totally rogue. They run from what they had just professed and from who God was helping mm -hmm. them become. Aaron led the people directly away from what God had taught and he made them a calf of gold that they got from Egypt. The gold was supposed to be used for all the awesome blueprints God had just given Moses, but they were using it for the exact opposite thing that God had told them to do. A calf is also a god from Egypt. It, it's pretty bad. Moses smashed the tablets in righteous anger. God was like, Moses, let's just start a new nation through you. But Moses prayed and God relented from what he was going to do. Moses led the people to choose. He said, Who's on the Lord's side? He led the destruction of those who chose to be against the Lord, and God sent a plague on everyone because of their disobedience. It was a total disaster, but God was patient with the people. Moses went right back up Mount Sinai, and God renewed the covenant with Israel and replaced the tablets that Moses had destroyed in righteous anger with further and continued laws and instructions. Then Moses went down to the base of Mount Sinai and built the tabernacle exactly as God had asked him to do it. Exodus saved the best for last, though. The most amazing part happens right here at the end. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The Lord's presence had come off the mountain and into the tabernacle in the midst of the people and where they were camping. God was dwelling in holiness with the people. All the work, all the specifics, all the instructions were much more than worth it. That's the book of Exodus, which is book two of the Pentateuch and book two out of 66 of the Bible. It finds its place perfectly in the continuing of the narrative of God's story, which we say has seven parts. Here they are. God created, man fell, Jesus promised, Jesus fulfilled, Jesus followed, Jesus returning, and the Bible is God's word.